Global Crossing was a telecommunications company that provided computer networking services worldwide. The employees at Global Crossing could easily inflate earnings through capacity swaps along with increasing revenue, along with other fraudulent methods. Failure to have effective controls in place at the business opened the door for fraud to be committed. In 2001, business prospects were looking down, so Global Crossing set out to try and boost revenues. One way they did this was through capacity swaps with another company called Quest. Each company would buy capacity from the other years in advance. The company receiving it would book it as sales revenue, but the one selling would book it as a capital expense, even though cash or capacity never exchanged hands. In 2001, auditors started questioning their practice. One of the analysts at Morgan Stanley asked them why we're becoming increasingly reliant on capacity swaps. Hmm, I think we have to quietly call Morgan Stanley out of our company. Global Crossing started thinking of ways to hide their practice from the auditors. We've got a bit of a problem. Looking at our accounts in this period, our revenue figure is down by a lot. I know we won't get our bonuses at this rate. What should we do? Well, we need a way of increasing our revenue figures so we can meet our targets. But the auditors are already suspicious of how we've overstated revenue in the past. We need someone to help us conceal it from the auditors. How about Joe Perone? He used to work uh, for our Franson as an auditor, so he would know the ins and outs of how we can conceal this. Great idea, and we can make him the vice president of finance. Now let's move on to overstaying revenue. Firstly, under the pressure of time-releasing prospect of ID company, Global Crossing took the shortcuts to enhance the performance by intentionally reporting revenue for London Crunchyroll rather than proposing it over its life to overstay the revenue. Secondly, GC took advantage of the nature of the accountants, misrecognized the receivable and revenue. Thirdly, GC commits the management fraud which reflects the internal control of the company is significantly low. The weak organisational structure within the company, as well as the lack of preventative controls in place, contributed to the overall scandal. Had there been sufficient controls in place, the misrepresented figures would have been realised much earlier and those with a stake in the company would have been able to alter the management team earlier on if necessary than allowing the problem to continue. Also, the lack of need to follow ethical guidelines allowed the company to fail as it did so as it undertook several fraudulent actions to misrepresent figures. Do you think what you were doing was wrong? Yes, we did know what we were doing was wrong, but we were under so much pressure from the shareholders, we had to do it. Why did you do it? Well, everyone else was doing it, and there was no control in place, so we were getting away with it. We would have been stupid not to. In the 21st century, when Global Crossing was going through the scandal, the directors were informed of potential circumstances of being exposed and they used the inside information to sell shares before the scandal was spread to the news. Gary Winnick, during the time between the first 10 months of 2001, sold 9% of his shares for 123,500,000. Because of this global crossing tightened the span of information with the higher section of the hierarchy after the scandal to save the business and rearrange the board of directors, they also fired the culprits of the scandal and fined them respectively. As Global Crossing struggled with its ethical principles, this is a perfect example of a passive internal audit system. It can be noted that a strong and effective audit and control system may deter employees or executives from potential unlawful or unethical activities. This can be done through intensive training at the start of an employment contract or by introducing stronger controls. A suggestion that we recommended was implementing segregation of duty. Now from the Encyclopedia of Cryptography and Security from Van Tilburg in 2011, it states that this concept is a security principle used to formulate multi-person control policies requiring that two or more different people be responsible for the completion of tasks or set of related tasks. Now this means that Global Crossing would have to use multiple persons to complete the tasks and by doing this they can reduce the chances of fraud and crime because multiple people or groups will be out there looking for errors and fraud before it can happen. And this will tighten up security, this can also prevent criminals attempting the fraud again because they will be more hesitant due to the teams of people waiting to pick up and report the fraud. The main fraud issues which we identified were the capacity swaps, the inflation of revenue and the questionable performance of the external auditor, Arthur Anderson. 
the inflation of revenue and capacity swaps shown in the company in a light which was quite the opposite of their current situation. However, the auditors, Arthur Anderson, didn't identify this. The controls process can be identified to have an equal blame for the scandal. This is because employees were able to bypass the internal controls. The key control recommendation for Global Crossing we have identified is segregation of duties.